Alright, now that I convinced some Syrats to leave, now I have this place all to myself again. <laughs> Strasm, how did you find my house? Play the obbies, the obbies, the obbies, the obbies! Enough! I'll play them if it makes you shut up! Yippee! Obbies, or obstacle courses, spiked in popularity from what I can assume around seven years ago, however it might be earlier. This was probably due to the boom in the amount of YouTubers like DanTDM playing Roblox. In Obbies, you have one purpose, get to the end. While some Obbies can be... <laughs> Harder than others, most of the ones you find will be pretty easy. Yeah, there were microtransactions, sure, but premium payouts weren't a thing at the time. This was a simpler era of Roblox, back when we used Builders Club instead. Over time, though, obbies became less and less popular and started to be replaced with tycoons and simulators. So, where does that leave us now? Not in a very good spot, that's for sure. It's peak! The horrors that you just witnessed through that video is what I'm going to go through today. We're going to go through all of the worst obbies on Roblox and see what's bad about them. There are gonna be games that let you skip the whole thing instantly, games that let you shut down the server. It's gonna get wild, which is why I'm going to give you the mandatory watch until the end for the watch time. Anyways, enough yapping, let's just get on with the first game. Welcome to Escape Amanda Obby, you know it's gonna be good when the background is a PNG. And that there are rebirths. Oh boy, this game is gonna be fun, isn't it? Immediately upon joining the game, we are greeted with a UGC wheel and leaderboard. Unfortunately, no matter what I did, it just did not seem to work. Not that the wheel didn't work, it just didn't award me the items for some reason, probably because they were out of stock. Besides that fluke, let's go ahead and check out the unremovable product placement button. The Amanda Morph, explode everybody, explode someone, kick somebody, finish the game, shut down the server, foggy sky, low gravity, speed boost, and server skip. Along with your typical obby stuff with, you know, the casual admin sword and stuff. Oh wow, stolen morphs, my favorite thing ever. Oh yeah, and also a free game pass timer because premium payouts. But enough of the Robux stuff, what's the actual game like? Well, you know those things in, like, video games where you have a bunch of yellow paint to guide you? That's basically this entire game. This game is so pandered towards toddlers that every single thing needs an explanation. Case in point, this door where you need to find two buttons to open it. Oh no guys, where's the button? I have no idea where the button is! The game is also, like, barely themed off Amanda the Adventure, like, there are crappy models and that's it. But yeah, a really good precedent of what's to come. Escape the Pet Shop is a totally original scenario that definitely does not take inspiration from any other game whatsoever. I chose hard difficulty because normal difficulty sounds like it would be a chore. Now, what's the first thing you see this time? A server leaderboard for some reason that only displayed one name, either that one only one person decided to complete the obby, or it's just bugged. Now, the shop, however, was a different story. They had, like, a bunch of stuff like, you know, telekinesis, trap other players, being able to buy everything for, like, $20, and a morph pass, which, if you're playing the game in first person, does it really matter? I mean, you can jump scare people, but that isn't really worth the cost of 499 Robux. Also, there's this, like, random photo of an owl that, like, I assume is AI-generated? I'm not entirely sure, though. After the world's greatest chase sequence with the pet catcher, we make our way to the vent. And we get into the basement. Yeah, this is a pretty common trope with all of these games. The idea is just taken from Barry's prison escape, and it seems like all of these first-person obbies do the same thing with it. Instead of iterating on the concept, it's just the same game with the same tropes over and over again. 
I mean, at least Escape the Pet Shop had a roller coaster. That was, like, pretty cool, I guess. I'll give it credit for that. But besides that, it just felt bland and boring in my opinion. Hopefully we don't get another game that's based off Barry's Prison Escape. Yeah, I don't really have any excuse for this one. This is just Barry's prison run, except everyone is on a bike for some reason. Literally everything here is stolen, so I'm not going to talk about it, because if I do talk about it, it would just be a review of Barry's prison run. Escape Baby Granny was literally so broken, I could jump out of the ceiling in the first room. I tried my hardest to break the game and skip to the end, however I just couldn't find a way even with jumping out of the place. Eventually I just decided to give up and play the actual game. It starts out as basically a ripoff of Granny, and then you go into the sewer, just like usual. Say, I'm curious, what's this game's error count like- JESUS CHRIST! HOW CAN YOU OVERLOOK AN ERROR EVERY FRAME?! Don't worry, I'm sure it's nothing that bad! This entire game feels free modeled and crappily made, don't play it. We've been through enough mascot escape games though, let's try something else. You know the game's gonna be good when you see an HD admin pop up. They weren't kidding when they said that this was easy. You can literally beat most of the game by just walking. Not even jumping, just walking. Also, why do you need pets in an obby game? They might as well have called this obby but you can't jump. That would make things a billion more times entertaining than this crap. Be careful what you wish for. Before we start, I'd like to mention how you can ENABLE THE JUMP BUTTON FOR ROBUX! WHY WOULD YOU EVEN ADD THAT? THE DEFEATS THE PURPOSE OF THE ENTIRE GAME! YOUR GIMMICK IS THAT YOU CAN'T JUMP! WHY WOULD YOU REMOVE THAT IF YOU PAY? Now, of course, walking by the obvious free morph wall and turning into Palmer from Circus and Lonky Bix, I guess we get to play the game. For some reason, the first room is an outside prison cell, which I guess gives the, off the vibe that we're in a prison that we're escaping, despite being in a, uh, sky void. It adds to the immersion! This is literally the most conceivably easy gameplay ever. I mean, like, the conveyors kind of add a difference to it. However, this game is made for little toddlers, so there's no point in making it hard. I've had enough of this. Generic anime flame transition, go! Obby but you can't see. The obby where you can't see, except you can see because this game was made for toddlers. Yeah, the game claims, like, you know, blindness and stuff. However, like, it's so bright that, like, the blindness doesn't even matter. I mean, you can always invite your friend to spend Robux or, I don't know, remove the gimmick entirely? Or just skip to the end, but that's a given at this point. This game just serves no challenge whatsoever. It's just... Meh. Drag Dentist Obby was the most interesting for me. Because this isn't an Obby. I mean, yeah, it is an Obby, but that's not the game's primary purpose. For you see... This is a simulator disguised as an obby! Complete with game passes, rebirths, and all! Gem farming area and everything! My favorite game is obby, but your skibbity stars on Prison Grow Teamwork Obby 3, the simulator! The actual obby itself was more unique than other simulators, because you actually had to drag stuff in this game, except the physics were so broken that boxes could just fling you across the map. Yeah, the game was greedy as hell, but hey, at least it was like, kinda fun for me. Welcome to Teamwork Morphs, featuring my favorite character from Battle for Dream Island, Cyclops Rocket. Forget Endgame, this is the biggest crossover of the century! I mean, look at this character lineup! 
After joining a lobby, this felt very, very similar to another game that we've played in the past. It's probably nothing. These puzzles are incredibly short and do not require any sort of thought at all. If you have an IQ over 70, you could probably solve this with some friends. I tried beating a level, however I was working with literal brain-dead idiots so I could not complete it. Oh boy, the last game we're playing today! I hope it's gonna be good! Welcome to Amazing Circus Prison Run, featuring your favorite characters, Black Tooth, Doll, Rabbit Blue, Bear Big, Blue Skeleton, Girl Doll, Big Purple Cat, Black Doll, Rainbow Cat, Rainbow Bear, Purple Cat, Bunny Black, Round, Snowball, and clown. After making our way through world's most generic platforming section, we finally make our way to the first enemy. <laughs> They're apparently called zombies, in which I have no idea how that thing looks like a zombie. So we have to grab a TNT, but once we do... Our first morph, featuring its own jump scare. After progressing through the labyrinth of hell a bit more, we unlock our next morph. We unlock round, but oh no, our good friend Doll has been infected with the zombie. Better use our jump scare attack, also known as this dubstep music that I am voicing over to not get copyrighted. I like where this game is going, but at the end of the day, it's just still Amazing Circus Prison Run. And just like that, we arrive at the end once more. All of the things we looked at were obviously geared towards children. Amazing Circus Prison Run proved that. Even though I did mention these types of obbies before, I haven't really gone into detail about them until now. And I'm glad I did, because this is like genuine garbage. I thought it was good. I thought all of it was good, in fact. I love this kind of stuff. I mean this in the rudest way possible. Just screw off. Okay, see you in like two episodes. Bye! Obviously, monetizing children is a very big tactic in Roblox, considering how tons and tons of kids are on that platform. Being the most popular MMO of all time, it's bound to have a majority of players that are children. And yeah, you can make tons of money off them, but you gotta give up your dignity. This also runs the question of what happens when those kids grow up. Will they look back on your game as a masterpiece, or will they look back at it saying, Why did I even like this? But does it really matter when you always get a new batch of kids? It's not like the market's gonna go away anytime soon. I don't know, I just feel like it's better to create a product that people remember fondly, instead of just content farm, amazing digital circus slop. At least that's my opinion. But either way, Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time. So, uh, what do we even do here? I don't know, your guess is as good as mine. The only thing I can think of is to, I guess, like, wait until that door appears again? Wait, I see a game over there! Wait, they actually have something in this place? One Deal or No Deal arcade machine. Fuck! <laughs>